Hey everyone, Rob here from Fireteam 6. Tonight we're going to talk about camouflage. Um, it's kind of a big subject. I'm bringing up 30 minutes of footage. I'm going to try to put it in about 15, 20 minute video. It's still going to be pretty long, but hopefully we can get through it. Now, the human eye is very good at detecting things like movement, uh, changes in color, shape, uh, changes in contrast. Very good at detecting that. So we're trying to fool the human eye when we wear camouflage into thinking there's nothing there in a nutshell. It's critical in Woodland Airsoft, which is 90% of what my team does. Uh, a lot of people kind of put it on the back burner. Uh, they're kind of obsessed with getting uh, you know, their primary gun, their secondary gun, uh, two or three pistols, a really cool helmet, blah, 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 blah. When in fact, after you get your gun and your eye pro, you should probably invest in some camouflage. The nice thing about it is, is there's some really affordable options out there that work as well, if not better, than some of the more expensive camo patterns out there. A quick note on what I call the high-speed uh, boutique camouflage pattern stuff like your cryptic, your Project Honor, or whatever. Understand that uh, camouflage is big business, okay? And there's lots of companies that are trying to push their pattern as the new high-speed, really cool pattern. As a, you know, it makes you disappear and it fools the human eye and blah, blah, blah. Um, most of that is bullshit and salesmanship. There's nothing that those new patterns generally bring to the table that even the old 1981 patterns don't do just as well or nearly as well. So if, if how you have fun is by wearing the newest and coolest camel pattern, great. Uh, you know, Airsoft's all about having fun. Go out and buy that pattern and, and do what you gotta do to have fun. But don't have the misconception that you're gonna have a, an advantage wearing that over some of the older stuff because it's just not true. I want to start with what our team uses. Uh, we have basically three different camel patterns we use. The main one we use uh, most times of the year is a good old fashioned multicam. Multicam is uh, pretty common, US standard issue right now for the Army. It's easy to find, um, relatively inexpensive. One of the best places you can find it is on eBay. There's always lots of soldiers trying to get rid of their old stuff. So for uh, 20, 30, 40 bucks, you can usually get a full set and be good to go. Now that works pretty well. Um, honestly, if you can only afford one pair of uh, camouflage, go with multicam. It's gonna serve you well most environments most of the year. Is it great everywhere? No. But it's usually good to average most places. You know, it, it, true to the name, it works multi, in multiple environments. Uh, for us, we usually use it in late spring uh, when the, you know everything is still just starting, the greens just starting to come up, but there's still plenty of dead stuff out there. And early fall, it usually works pretty well, too. One of the other camo patterns we use is uh, Desert Digital. Um, I just call this Desert Marpat, and I know there's AOR1 and AOR2 and blah, 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 blah. And yes, technically they're different patterns, but you know what? When you're out in the woods and you're looking at it, it all looks the same. So we'll just call it Desert Marpat, all right? So, Desert Mark Pad. This stuff is excellent. It is a phenomenal uh, winter camouflage when everything's dead. Still plenty of brown out there. People always want to wear white. I don't know why. There's more brown than white unless you're in the middle of a snowstorm. Desert Mark Pad works excellent. Also use it in uh, late fall. Good stuff. Late fall, early spring, winter for a rare winter game. This is the way to go. Um, the, other, the other camel pattern we use in deep summer when it's really thick out, there's going to be Woodland Marpat. Love this stuff. Uh, you'll basically disappear. It's this digital pattern just like the Desert Marpat. Um, don't really use it that often though, just when it's really thick out in the uh, deep summer and everything's real thick. Now, if I don't have that pattern, is this going to work just fine in deep summer? Absolutely. There's so much green everywhere. It, this, you'll hide just fine. But you're going to look a little, you're going to disappear a little bit better using your woodland marpat. Now, on to the next thing. Oh, real quick. One pattern we're considering going to um, is this new multicam tropic. It's a somewhat new pattern. Uh, we're looking at going to it to replace our uh, woodland marpat. Do I think it's going to work better than woodland marpat? No, it's probably going to work just as well. Uh, I don't have any high expectation of, of it being the, the magic solution to all things camouflage. 
uh, some guys on the team wanted to get it. They wanted to try it out, and you know, a lot of airsoft was about having fun, and they thought this would make it fun for them. So I said, yeah, let's do it. Let's pick up some uh, multi-can tropic. So we'll see how it works in the near future. Um, so those are the three camel patterns that our team uses right now. Um, there are cheaper options out there. There's um, 1981 Woodland Camo. That's the real old school army stuff, which is actually starting to be kind of hard to find as opposed to multi-cam because there's just not as much of it out there. There's also the uh, tricolor desert from Gulf War I. Uh, once again, not as much out there as you might think, but those are both two very good uh, camo patterns to either replace with a mark pad or desert mark pad. So some quick tips on your gear. You get this really cool camouflage pattern, what are you gonna wear you know, for your carrier, for your chest rig, for your plate carrier, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, a lot of guys wanna have everything matching, okay? The problem with that is, is you're really limiting yourself or you're gonna cost a lot, it's gonna cost a lot of money when let's say you're wearing Woodland Marpat and you're trying to find a Woodland Marpat carrier, not too hard, Woodland Marpat pouches, now you're gonna struggle and then what are you going to do the rest of the year? You're, you're going to, not going to match. Okay. So what I would recommend is get yourself tan gear. Okay, flat dark earth tan, whatever you want to call it. This is great, and it goes pretty well with all the camel patterns I've shown you thus far. It works well. If you don't want to go with tan, I would go with uh, olive drab or green. This is a chest rig I use. Really easy to find pouches in both those colors. Real plentiful, lots of tan, lots of OD out there. What you don't want to do is wear black. I see a lot of new players, um, they run out, the first thing they do is, I want to wear a black tack vest and black this and black that, because they want to look all SWAT tactical. Well, that's cool and all, but you're really easy to spot. I mean, it's, it's like a beacon out there when you're walking through the woods. Oh, there's that guy with his black armor. Okay, so don't wear, wear the black stuff. Get uh, tan or OD green, in my humble opinion. Now, the nice thing about tan is, is it works well year round and that's not to say that it blends really well with the green stuff, but when there's a lot of green stuff around, there's usually enough stuff to hide behind that it's not going to matter. Okay, in the, in the winter or, you know, early spring, late fall, there's not a lot of foliage around and if you're wearing green, it's going to stand out a little bit because there's just not that much to hide behind. So if you can only go with one color, I would go with tan for your gear much better way to go. Uh, quick note on helmets. I do not wear helmets. I used to wear one for indoor and uh, you know in case you get shot in the head at close range it's nice for that but if you're trying to stay concealed in the woods helmet is your greatest enemy. Okay. The thing with helmets and this is a, just a climbing helmet I had handy this, this nice, nice smooth line here is a really obvious shape and it's really easy to see this as it's walking through the woods and it doesn't matter if you paint this it doesn't matter if you put a cover on it that'll help but at the end of the day you still got this nice smooth line that's right on top of your head and every time you peek out from behind a tree or whatever or peek over a piece of cover you're gonna see this thing it's really easy to spot I love it when the other team has those really cool fast high speed fast helmets whatever you want to call them that's great um, you look really cool, but you're also really easy to spot. I just wear a regular uh, multi-cam cap or a tan cap or a green cap, whatever seems to work best that way. A soft cap is really the best way to go, just like a ball cap. Uh, it's also a lot cheaper. Another big thing people often disregard is their face. If you think about it, the first thing you see when you're out playing another player who is wearing camouflage, you often see their face, first thing, stands out. Um, so. A good approach that, that will really decrease the amount of times you get spotted is getting some sort of camouflage on your face. Um, my favorite is these masks like this, these mesh masks. You can buy these in any uh, sporting goods, hunting store. They cost like 10 bucks. These things work awesome. You will really disappear once you start using these. I used to use them a lot more. They're kind of a pain in the ass though. So I kind of got away from using them just, uh, just out of comfort for you know drinking water and stuff. But uh, when I'm really trying to be sneaky, this is definitely the way to go. Uh, they make some more high-speed ones, uh, stuff like this. This thing's pretty cool. The problem with these is, uh, yeah, this is cryptic when you're when you're neat boutique camos. Um, the thing about these are, 
is if you can't breathe because it's not mesh, if your breath can't get out and out of here, it's going to go straight up and it's going to go into your, your eye protection. It's going to fog you up. So kind of be cognizant of that when you're picking, you know, what kind of face protection you're, what kind of face camouflage you're going to wear. Uh, the best way to go is probably to wear uh, like face paint, like camouflage face paint the military uses. Uh, the problem is it's kind of impractical for airsoft sometimes for stuff after the game. You know, if you want to go grab, you know, whatever fast food with your friends and you got all this damn camouflage on your face, you're going to look like a weirdo, even more so than you usually do just wearing your camouflage. So I would not recommend the face paint, but it does work really well. It doesn't hinder you uh, drinking water or anything else like that. Another quick note on ghillie suits. Now, some people think ghillie suits are all the rage. In my personal opinion, for the most part, they're just hot, okay? Uh, especially if you, if you make one like the military does, they're gonna be very hot. And there are some guys at games I've put on that, that put a lot of time in and they make some amazing ghillie suits. In fact, I'll try to splice in a photo here of one from one of the uh, ops that we had. It was excellent. The guys, were, the guys disappeared as a shooter spotter team and it was, it was really cool. They did a great job. But for the most part, they're just really hot and they reduce your ability to feel hits. And honestly, unless you match it up really well with your environment, um, it might cause you more harm than good. You might just be really obvious because you're the, the big walking bush that doesn't quite match with everything else out there. Um, what I have tried doing and I've had some success in is I bought what they call a Cobra Ghillie. Looks like this. Now you can't see it because there's some stuff on here, but it's basically a mesh. And it just covers your upper shoulders, your back, and it's got a hood on it. But everything else is clear. It's much lighter than, a, than like a full ghillie suit. Okay? And it, uh, it breathes well. And the nice thing is it covers the important stuff that you're usually going to see when you're playing. The stuff that you, you want to stay hidden from the, the enemy. So if you're, if you're prone and you're, you, know, you pick it lifting up just a little bit to see what's out there, or you're getting behind your gun, it's going to cover all those things. You don't have to worry about covering your, all your legs and, and you know, your forearms because honestly those aren't that visible. Okay, So you're going to save yourself a lot of weight. Um, what I put on here was these little see-through leaf cutout deals. Um, these things are really good at making you disappear out there. They really trick the human eye. They, they break up the human form. I couldn't tell you where I bought them because I bought them so many years ago and I've been unable to find them online. So if you can find a place that sells these little mesh cutout leaves these things are excellent definitely pick up a set now i have this fair amount of green and brown i've i've uh, got this built up for this time of year this kind of uh, march april early may is when i use this and then uh, early fall i use this as well usually when i'm wearing uh, multi-cam that's what this is set up for all right last note Painting guns. Is painting your gun a good idea? Um, if you want to remain hidden, yes, it's a pretty good idea. Is it as important as you know wearing some sort of camouflage cover on your face? Probably not. Uh, not that critical. But people do spot your gun if your gun is all black. Um, just understand when you paint your gun, there's lots of videos on YouTube on how to paint your gun. When you paint your gun, you're severely decreasing the value of it. So if you ever want to sell it, you might as well just take half off the price you want to sell it for. Not that the resale you know, market on airsoft guns is that great anyway, but just understand if you paint your gun, you pretty much are saying you want to keep it forever because the resale value is going to be crap after you paint it. So uh, that's everything on uh, camouflage. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got any comments or questions, feel free to add them uh, in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching.